So what's going on guys, Kate is here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the top 3 best new player builds for PvP and PvE in New World. So all these builds will be very simple and easy to use. And I specifically found the best weapons and perks. So no matter which level you are, you can watch this video and start using a fun and easy build. So for each and every single build, I will explain what attributes and perks you want to have, then what gems and specific gear you want to use to get out to your stats the best possible results. Then as well, I will show you the best gameplay of me using different weapons, so you would know which abilities you want to use first on your enemies and much more. And just before we start, I want to thank today's sponsor, Opera GX. I've been using this browser for a few months now and I like it a lot. So Opera GX is an internet browser that focuses on gaming and has tons of really cool and useful features like the WhatsApp, Discord integration, Instagram, Twitter and much more. This browser also has a GX player which lets you connect your Apple Music, YouTube Music, Tidal, Spotify and much more. So you can play your music easily on your browser. And for your gamers out there, there is even a GX control, which has a RAM limiter and CPU limiter, so you can make sure that it doesn't lag when you play video games or listen to music. Or even if you really like to open hundreds of different tabs, then you can easily monitor them and keep them running in the background. The reason I really like this browser is the design and customizability. Then on top of all this, unlike other game developers, from a few months of using this browser, I have seen that Opera GX actually listens to their customer feedback and keep on improving. And at this point, this browser has become my every day-to-day -day browser and you can easily switch from whatever browser you're using right now by going to the settings, then click import bookmarks and settings, then click import and that's it. Opera GX has as well a GX corner for staying up to date with new releases and gaming news. So you don't have to spend time looking for new games to play, but everything is at your fingertips. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in description and download it now for free on a computer or mobile phones. So then moving over to the first build, which is the easiest and best weapon in the entire game. And for the weapons, you want to use the hatchet and life staff. And these are the attributes you want to have. So first things first, if you start from level 0, you want to get your focus to 150 and then start building your constitution. And around level 60, you should have 300 focus and 100 constitution. And last but not the least, for your gear, you want to go with the medium category. And the best gear setup is to have medium helmet, heavy chest piece, light gloves, heavy pants and light boots. And this will give you 22.9 kg weight, which is exactly just below the heavy weight category. So then moving over to the first weapon, which is the hatchet. And these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all, you want to unlock the berserk ability with these two perks. Then afterwards, unlock the second ability called the feral rush and then get these two perks. Then then lastly, unlock the last start ability with these two perks and that's it. Now from this point and onwards, you're full free to choose in whichever order you want to spend your points. So then let's go over to the second weapon, which is the life staff. And these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all, you want to unlock the first perk and then the first ability called the sacred ground. And then afterwards, unlock all these five perks. Then now let's go over to the other side and unlock this one perk. And then the second ability called the beacon. And then get these two perks. Then lastly, unlock the last star ability called the lights embrace. And then get these two perks as well. And now from this moment, you're full free to spend your points in whatever order you like. Okay, so now let's go over to the gameplay where I will show you the best way to to play this build. So first of all you are a off DPS slash off healer and right now in the current stage of the game healers are broken and very powerful. So then for the life staff your Q ability is called the sacred ground which you have to point and select the area you want to place it in and then cast it for a split second. Then our R ability is called the lights embrace and it basically works the same way just for a single target. And lastly we have the F ability called the beacon which you can just aim and it places a huge healing circle on the ground. And if you target the player you can just attach the spell to him specifically. So instead of the circle being on the ground it will be attached to a player, making this build very useful in expeditions and group PvP. So then for our second weapon we have the hatchet, and when attacking an enemy it's super simple. You want to use your Q ability aka activate the berserk mode, and then keep on using auto attacks and use the R and F ability, which both of them are just simple damage spells. The best thing about the berserk mode is that it will give you self healing and movement speed, so you can use it to run away or run towards someone. So the way you want to attack a player is first of all from a distance use your life staff and auto attack the target. Then when you get closer to the enemy or he will get closer to you then switch to the hatchet and activate the berserk mode. 
and keep on using auto attacks and the RNF ability. Then whenever you or your teammates are low health, switch back to the life staff and place the sacred ground or beacon on the ground and whenever you want to heal yourself or a specific target, then use the lights embrace ability. And to heal yourself, hold the control button and then activate the spell. And it is that simple. For more damage and attacking, you use the auto attacks and hatchet. And to heal yourself or teammates, switch to the life staff and that's it. So now for my last and final conclusions for this build. This hatchet and life staff weapon combination is meant to do a bunch of damage while at the same time having the ability to survive for very long. And you can use this build for PvP and PvE aka leveling as well. And like I said at the beginning, right now the healing staff in general and heavy plus medium armor is broken and it has way too much resistance and healing output capability. So as long as the current meta doesn't change, this is by far the best and most simplistic build in New World. And if I ever see any new patch notes or changes, I will update and make a new video as well. And then last but not the least, for your life staff, you want to use the diamond gem. Then for your hatchet, use the amber gem. And lastly, for all of your gear, amulets, rings and everything else, use the enix gems. And if you are a new player or beginner and not familiar with how this game works, then basically the hatchet and life staff are two different weapons. One is very good with strength and the other one with focus. But as we mainly have a focus build, by using the amber gem, we make the weapon weapon switch from one attribute to another one. So now instead of the hatchet scaling with strength it scales with focus. And by doing this we make this build do even more damage and just in general stronger. So in a quick summary, if you're looking for the best and easiest build to learn and play then this is the one for you, so enjoy! So then moving over to the second build which is the Great Axe and Warhammer. And these are the attributes you want to have. So then no matter from which level you start using this build you want to first of all get your strength to 100 or even 150. And then start building your constitution. And around level 60 you should have 200 strength and 200 constitution. And then last but not the least for your armor you want to be in the heavy category. Which means using a heavy equipment plus a shield on your back if you want to get as many cool things as you can. But it is not required and won't give you any extra stats. So then for our first weapon we have the great axe and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock the first ability called the reap and then get these two perks. Then afterwards unlock the second ability called the charge and then get these two perks. Then from this point now let's move over to the other side and unlock all these three perks. Then lastly unlock the last third ability called the gravity well and then get these three perks. And now from this point you're feel free to pick and choose which perks you want to unlock next. Okay and now let's move over to the second weapon which is the warhammer. And these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock the first ability called the clear route and then get these two perks. Then afterwards unlock the second ability called the shockwave and then get these two perks to that as well. And lastly unlock the last star ability called the path of destiny and then get these two perks. And now from this point let's take a closer look at the left side and unlock all these three perks and that's it. Now again you can spin your points in whatever order you like. So then let's move over to the gameplay where I will show you the best way to play this tank build and how to get out of your abilities the best possible results. So first things first your great axe Q ability is called the gravity well which you can aim and shoot and if you hit the target in that electric storm he will take damage and get stunned. Then the second ability is called the reap which basically extends your axe for 5 meters and if enemy is running away you can pull him back. And lastly we have the F ability called the charge and this is another dash ability which will deal damage and give you more mobility. And now let's go straight into the warhammer and the first Q spell is called the clear out and it is a wide swing that knocks back all targets in 4 meter range. Then the R ability is called the shockwave and when using the spell it will give us the ability to slam down the hammer and create a small earthquake and all players standing in it will get stunned for 2 seconds. And lastly we have the F ability called the path of destiny which creates a huge electric wave and all enemies standing in this path will take a bunch of damage. So the way you want to attack a player is by using your great axe and then activating the gravity well and then follow that up with the charge ability. Then when the enemy is out of all of your stuns he will probably try to run away. So use the reap ability and pull him back. Then now switch to the warhammer and either way use your shockwave or path of destiny to stun or deal damage. Or save it for later and keep on using auto attacks plus the block so you do one or two heavy attacks and then block in 
between. So like you can see with this build there is no one best way to use your spells. The most important thing is to know what each ability does and with time and practice you will know what to do in each situation. And then in between remember to use the blocking system. But if you fight against a ranged player then don't forget to use the heavy jumps and to reach a player don't just run into a straight line but try to run from one side to another and this will make you a lot harder target to hit. So now for my last and final conclusions for this build. This great axe and warhammer weapon combination right now is super good and as you're using a heavy armor you can still survive for very long but at the same time deal a bunch of damage. So then last but not the least for your warhammer and great axe for pvp use the opal gem and then for pve and leveling use the carnelian gem and then for all of your gear get the diamond gems. So if you were looking for a tank build that does still a lot of damage and can survive then this is the build for you so enjoy. So now for my last and final build we are using the fire staff and life staff and these are the attributes you want to have. And no matter from which level you start using this build, first of all you want to get your focus to 200 and then get 50 points in constitution and then continue putting everything else in focus. And around level 60 you should have 300 focus and 100 constitution. And again last but not the least for your armor you want to go with the medium category. And the best gear setup is to have medium helmet, heavy chest piece, light gloves, heavy pants and light boots. So then moving over to the first weapon which is the fire staff. And these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock both these two perks and then the first ability called the fireball. And then get these three next perks. Then afterwards unlock the second ability called the pillar of fire and then the next perk to that as well. And now let's take a closer look at the other side and unlock all these three perks. Then lastly unlock the last third ability called the burnout and then get these two perks. And now from this point you're for free to pick and choose which perks you want to unlock next. So then let's go over to the second weapon which is the life staff. And these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock this perk and then the first ability called the sacred ground. And then afterwards unlock all these five perks. Then now let's go over to the other side and unlock this one perk. And then the second ability called the beacon. And then get these two perks. Then lastly unlock the last third ability called the lights embrace. And then get these two perks. And now from this point you're for free to spin your points in whatever order you like. Okay so now we have come to the gameplay where I will show you the best way to play this build. So first of all we have the fire staff and the Q ability aka the burnout is a big dash spell which you can use for mobility or if you hit enemies while dashing they will take extra burn damage. Then the R ability is called the pillar of fire. I usually only use it on groups of mobs or players but never in a 1v1 because it will deal decent damage but you have to stand still for a second while casting the spell and by doing that you become an easy target. So basically only use the spell against against multiple players. There is of course a way to cancel the animation by using the spell and right away dodging but sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I prefer to save it for only wars or pve expeditions. And then lastly we have the F ability called the fireball which is very powerful damage spell. And as it is an aoe spell you don't have to hit directly an enemy. You can just aim it at the ground where the target is standing on and it will damage him as well. And as we already looked into the life staff in the previous build so we will go straight in what you need to do when attacking a player. So when you see an enemy use your fire staff and with light attacks shoot the enemy. Then when he gets close enough to you that you know that you can easily land your shot then use your fireball and pillar of fire and make your enemy burn. And then lastly to damage the enemy even more dash into him with the burnout ability. And then switch to the life staff and keep on healing yourself with all the three healing abilities that we already discussed in the previous build. So the main goal of this build is to do a lot of damage from afar. And then when the enemy starts attacking you you can easily survive all of his damage by just using the life staff and then when you get your abilities on the fire staff again switch to that weapon and finish off the player. So now for my last and final conclusions for this build. The fire staff and life staff weapon combination is another simple but good build that you can easily use especially if you don't like the hatchet and life staff approach. And then lastly for your gem choice for the fire staff you want to use the amber gem and then for your life staff get the diamond gem and for all of your gear rings and everything else use the enix gems and that's about it. So if you want to be a mage healer then this is the build for you so don't forget to have fun and that's about it. So I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good beginner friendly builds that you would like to see in the next video then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. 
And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I will catch you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace.